Hi everybody, it's Miss Lori. Thanks for watching again this week. This week I'm thinking about kites. Have you ever flown a kite before? It's, it's pretty much fun, it really is. But there's one thing that you need to fly a kite. Do you know what that is? Well, there's more than one thing, but one thing that definitely you have to have. Yeah, that's wind. You, you've got to have some wind or a breeze or the kite won't go up in the air. Sometimes you can run and try to force that, make that breeze, but that's why it's a lot easier to fly a kite at the beach or it's fun to fly a kite at the beach because there's always that constant breeze coming off the ocean that usually you can get a kite up in the air, but it is fun. The wind is a funny thing. You can't see it, but you can feel it when it's blowing and you can see it moving things. You can see what it does even without seeing it. Let me give you an example. So I have, I have a pinwheel here and it's still, but watch when I blow on it. It moved, didn't it? You don't see anything coming out of my mouth though. It just kind of looks like magic, doesn't it? But the wind, the bre the, my breath is making the pinwheel move even though we can't see it, it's there. Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit being like the wind in our verses this week. Remember last week we celebrated Pentecost, the big holiday of the church where we celebrate the disciples receiving the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming to them. Well, now we're um, gonna talk about the Holy Spirit some more. And the verses this week are John 3, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. And there's a man named Nicodemus in these verses. And he comes to Jesus in the night to ask him about how you can become, how you can be a part of the kingdom of God, how you can be part of God's family. Now, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. That was a person who was um, high up in the church. They were religious leaders of the Jewish community. And he comes to him at night for a reason, because the Pharisees really would not want to be seen talking to Jesus. He's afraid for other people to see him, but he's curious and he realizes that there's something about Jesus that's special. But the Pharisees generally did not like Jesus and did not agree with what he was teaching the people or how he was teaching them. Um, they really disliked him. So Nicodemus comes at night to Jesus so that None of his Pharisee friends can see him. And he does, he asks him, you know, what, what does it take to become a, a part of the kingdom of God? I mean, they didn't call it Christians then, but, but that's really what he's meaning. And Jesus tells him this, this is straight from the verses. He says, unless someone is born anew, it is not possible to see God's kingdom. Now, this sounds very confusing to Nicodemus and maybe to us too, because he's like, how can I be reborn or born again? I've already been born from my mother. I'm an adult now. The same with us. We've already been born. We're here on earth. We're adults or children. How can we be born again? And then Jesus answers that with, let me just read it exactly too. He says, he goes on to explain and says, a person must be born of the water and the spirit to enter God's kingdom. So there, are, there is a way to be reborn, but not physically reborn. So born of the water, let's think about that. Um, let's think of baptism. Maybe you were baptized when you were a baby. Maybe you've seen pictures of it. Maybe you uh, will still be baptized at some point. Maybe that hasn't happened yet. But when we're baptized, there is water involved. Uh, and so that's like being born of the water. When we're baptized, we say that the baby or the person is becoming part of God's family. So that's the first thing. And then to be born of the Spirit, I think that would mean to remember and recognize the Holy Spirit that we talked about last week. You know, Jesus was teaching that we have our bodies, our physical bodies that are here with us, but we also have a spirit that is part of us. A spirit that we can't see, but we know that it is inside of us. We can feel it. Sometimes it, it influences the things that we do. 
And that's what it's talking about when we accept God's love, when we're baptized and then we accept God's love. It's like God's Spirit, His Holy Spirit is in us. Just like the wind that we talked about, we can't see it, but it's there. We can sometimes feel it and we, it helps us, it makes us move just like this spinner. Oops, let me make it move there. Makes it move. It's not spinning around this time, but how, how the wind makes it move. The spirit makes us move, makes us kind of control some of our actions, makes us move in different ways. It's there always to guide us and to be with us, to help us live the good life that God has planned for us. So through the water of baptism and the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are reborn or born again. We become new people. We become a member of the family of God. We are a Christian. And that spirit is with us always, even when we can't see it. So maybe take some time this week to be quiet or still. I know that's really hard to do. But sometimes when we're quiet and still, we can feel that spirit in us. And maybe take the time to listen to that spirit. That spirit helps us know what is right and what's wrong. And it helps lead us each day into the way that God wants us to live. All right, let's say a prayer together. I'll say it and give you a chance to repeat it after me. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the chance to be reborn into your family Help us to take time every day to feel the Holy Spirit in us and to help us let it guide us each day. Amen. All right. I hope you will take the time to think about that spirit and see how it guides you each day. Have a great week. Bye-bye.